Hello and welcome everybody to the first live panel of the Business Insider Festival where we'll be talking today about the impacts of the COVID pandemic on e-commerce. Tarek, maybe to, to start with you, how, what happened at about you and what did you do? Yeah, maybe to start with a view on the market. So the fashion market has massively decreased uh, with the beginning of pandemic. Um, the whole, the total market basically crashed by more than 50%. Um, luckily, the online uh, share of uh, within that market has massively increased. And in total, um, we saw that there, is basically a, oh, there was basically a stagnation or a small growth in the online fashion sector, which is good news, obviously, because um, offliners have massively suffered. Um, but what has changed even more was uh, uh, the demand. So we saw that demand in certain categories like evening dresses, basically everything you wear when, when going out has obviously massively dropped. Nobody was buying evening dresses anymore, but sports kids and uh, leisure wear, home wear basically has massively increased. So we not just saw that, that the market was fluctuating a lot, but we saw that there was a massive shift in what were people actually demanding, um, which channels did they use, um, where, would, where, where, where are they spending their time. So for us, that meant we, need to, we had to adapt our um, replenishing, replenishment, our offer on the website, the sorting of the categories, um, pricing and obviously also our marketing activities uh, within days. And um, luckily, as uh, at about you, most of the stuff is um, automized and uh, technology driven. That could happen um, quite fast because it was done basically by algorithms and machines. Um, but still, this was a huge challenge for us. Thomas, how about you? I, I suppose inventory wasn't such a challenge for you, but I guess shipping probably was more difficult, was it? Yeah, so, so we have massive volumes of shipping, uh, which is uh, like we are the lion's shares of uh, C2C shipping in, uh, in, in our countries. And so for us, it was a different situation, especially in France and Spain. We saw that during Corona, a lot of disruption was there. And we work with a model where people ship to a shop and then pick it up. So it's a drop off pickup shipping. And um, so we took a very controversial decision to stop activities. So we said, okay, everybody is in panic. And yeah, we kind of know packaging are not infecting, but many people standing in rows in front of shops that are essential food shops, we thought it was ethically not uh, correct to stay open. So we closed our business and stopped uh, shipping, uh, brought uh, uh, two weeks later a reservation mode live so people could keep, keep reservating, reserving. And then... Um, we we discussed with the government that you know that this is this is a good right time you can go live again and we went live again and we saw that actually our traffic bounced back, so this cost you know enormous amounts of revenue and cost and during that period we said uh, to all hiring let's let's only hire now at the necessary gaps that we have, and as soon as we see that it bounces back then we continue uh, our aggressive growth strategy. And, you know, after a couple of weeks, uh, let's say roughly a month, we saw everything is back, everything is on green, and we started to invest again. Um, Alexa, I assume you, your business has also been growing, but probably a less, little less rocketed than, than ours because, you know, inventory is not a thing for you, shipping is not a thing for you, you basically provide a constant service, um, which is why my, my question to you is, you have a much, you have much more overview on the market than we have, where we've seen our, you know, pers our perspective is kind of limited, and you see the whole of e-commerce and even, you know, other, other markets that you cater for. Um, what are your observations? What has, what has moved into what direction? What has suffered? What has grown? And how does e-commerce uh, hold its water? Uh, well, it was quite inter interesting, actually, to see beginning of this year, we first saw APEC under lockdown, sort of, and then it moved over to Europe and it ended up in the US. But if you then drill down into the different verticals, you could see that travel, for example, came more or less to a standstill. Obviously, for those retailers who only serve uh, brick and mortar stores, they also didn't see any traffic at all. On the other hand, we saw a lot of increase in e-commerce, not only in retailers, but also in streaming, communications, gaming, gambling, those sort of merchants obviously all benefited from more people being at home. I think the number which I find most interesting is that those merchants who um, provide a unified commerce experience, meaning they, they serve uh, brick and mortar, uh, mobile and e-commerce uh, shops, 50% of those that we have on the platform didn't see any change in revenue. So the shoppers still want to shop, they just move to other channels. And I think that's very promising also for the future to say, it doesn't really matter which channel I'm serving, as long as I can offer anything the shopper wants on that right channel and give them the same experience. Uh, so that was quite cool. Interestingly, one, one thing that really puzzled me during Corona, when you, when you spoke to particularly some of the larger e-commerce companies, you were getting a lot like, you know, we're, we're not so, 
we're not so keen on actually doing something because all our targets are already met. So it's it's uh, <laughs> it's nice to uh, to see that this this is not enough for you. No, I think I think if you're a lazy corporate structure, you can go on holiday and tell your boss you had your targets. Yeah, I guess uh, none of us in this room are wired this way. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I uh, pray for the shareholders of uh, people who see it that way. So it's like. Good luck with that team.